Now, Kenya's president is calling for an immediate uh, ceasefire in neighboring Ethiopia. The United States is also trying to defuse tensions by sending a special envoy to the country. The move comes following a threat on the capital by Tigrayan forces after they secured strategic cities along a major highway. Now, Ethiopia's prime minister, meanwhile, shows no sign of backing down. He's calling on citizens to rise up and bury Tigrayan forces. Now, for more on this story, we can bring in our international affairs editor, Philip Turrell. Phil, good to see you as always. What is going on in Ethiopia? Well, what we basically have here is a standoff between the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, which formerly ruled the country in a four-party coalition, a federal coalition, and which was ousted after uh, nearly 20 years in power back in 2018. That was after protests against its rule, against uh, repression in the country and against corruption in the country. And that led to the formation of a new government and the centralization of the government in Ethiopia under the hands of Abiy Ahmed, the current prime minister. Abiy Ahmed, who won the Nobel Peace Prize for putting an end to the conflict with Eritrea. So he was considered at the time back in 2018 as the real darling on the international front. But since then, uh, things have gone from bad to worse with this declaration by the TPLF, the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, that they do not agree with the centralisation of power. They went ahead and held local elections in Tigray in the north of Ethiopia. That was seen as a red rag by the power in the, in the capital, Addis Ababa. And has, we've since then seen this uh, uh, fighting going on between the two sides, which principally started exactly a year ago after an attack against a military base uh, by Tigrayan rebels. Tigr Tigr the TPLF, the, the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, is now no longer even recognised by the Electoral Commission uh, in Ethiopia. So over the past few days, what we've seen is the TPLF PLF advancing its position slowly more and more towards the capital Addis Ababa. As you just said, there were uh, three towns that are now in the hands uh, of the organisation and the people in Addis Ababa itself have been told to get hold of weapons if they have guns for them to be ready. Uh, there could be an imminent attack against uh, the capital city uh, and the Prime Minister himself, Abiy Ahmed, has uh, said that it's now all out war and uh, just to quote him, he says what the people of Addis Ababa need to do is to drown the enemy in their own blood. So you can see the situation is really quite tense right now. Indeed. And and th those comments, in fact, were actually taken down uh, by Facebook, it should be said. Now, in other news uh, with e Ethiopia, the UNHCR, along with the Ethiopian Commission for Human Rights, has come out with a joint report which says that atrocities in this Tigrayan conflict have been committed on both sides. Yeah, that's correct. So there's been this big investigation because this is a situation, as I said, has been dragging on for a year now. And there have been allegations of widespread human rights abuses going on. 350,000 people in Ethiopia are uh, believed to be suffering from famine as a result of this. So here's a statement from uh, those organisations, including the uh, UNHCR, saying all parties have committed violations of international human rights, humanitarian and refugee law, some of which may amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity and the perpetrators must be brought to justice. Now, there was a press conference yesterday by Michelle Bachelet, who is the UN Human Rights Commissioner, and she went further in that, saying that there have been reports of civilian massacres, extrajudicial killings, kidnappings, arbitrary detention, sexual violence and torture, and that the situation is one of extreme brutality. The response from the government has been, well, there has been no report so far of genocide, which is what the TPLF is uh, saying has happened. Uh, reply from the UNHCR, well, there are uh, incidences that we've seen of uh, uh, against uh, minorities in, in that region, but we haven't been able to go in to verify those reports uh, for the moment, but it doesn't rule out the possibility uh, that genocide has taken place. And on top of that, the other thing which is very important, Delano, here to note is that if the situation in Ethiopia really does spiral out of control, this can have a knock-on effect in other countries in the region. We've seen the situation in Sudan already, uh, where there has been a military coup that is unstable. Uh, there are also problems on the border border between Sudan and uh, also Ethiopia. Uh, so uh, there is a risk that if the situation degener degenerates further, then we could see a regional instability increasing in, uh, in, in East Africa. So a lot of things to worry about. That's why you have Uhuru Kenyatta calling for, for this ceasefire. Philip, thank you very much for that. Philip Tarobao.